you ever feel like something's just a little off in your throw? I feel like I'm swinging around and just not really balanced on my throw. Everything keeps turning over a little bit. I know there's a headwind, but it just feels off. I think I'm doing something wrong with my arm. That was it. My trail arm wasn't doing anything. Hey you guys, what is up? It's Antonio. Welcome back to another episode here on Gladiator Disc Golf. Today we're talking about the trail arm in our backhand throw. It's not just hanging there loosey-goosey, it's definitely helping you throw the disc down the fairway and approaching the basket. <laughs> So why is it important to know what your trail arm is doing? Two words, centrifugal force. Centrifugal force is going to help us improve our backhand throw. And if you already have a great backhand throw without knowledge of centrifugal force, that's great. But having this knowledge is going to help you understand better why you can throw the disc further and then also how you can improve your form and improve your distance and accuracy. It all revolves around physics, specifically centrifugal and centripetal force. So by no means do I wanna bore you with all physics terms and everything like that, so I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. In the description below, I'm going to leave all the links I used in my research to make this video, so if you have any questions, you can check those out. If you still have questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below, I'll do my best to explain. So what is centrifugal force? Well, centrifugal force deals with the rotating motion. And in layman's terms, it's that rotating motion that propels the disc away from the center object. So in this case, the center object is our bodies, our arm is the pendulum, and the disc is the object that's rotating around and propelling away from our center. So what centrifugal force is actually doing is pushing this object, in this case, a disc, pushing it away from us. So the force with which the disc leaves our hand is directly proportional to velocity. So in other words, more mass with more speed equals greater force. So look, quick little caveat to that, that's why you see a lot of pros throwing um, heavier discs, max weight discs, because they can generate so much more speed with heavier discs, they actually increase their velocity. And that's how they get so much more distance with the same kinds of discs that we're throwing when we go out to the course. But here's the important part about centrifugal force. Centrifugal force is inversely proportionate to the distance from the body, our center, or in other words, the axis it turns around. So think about our brace leg, our hips, our torso. The disc is inversely proportionate to those things. Okay, well, what does that mean? The further the disc is from your body when you're throwing, the less force you're going to be able to throw it with. That's why we have this power pocket. That's why we want to bring the disc into this box so that we can keep it close to our chest and increase the amount of force we put into the disc. So let's use my keys here for an example because there's a weight on one end with all the keys and everything and then the lanyard on the other. When I hold the lanyard at the very end, I can spin it around and as I continue to spin it, it gains momentum. But here's the thing, the moment I actually tighten up and shorten the amount of lanyard that's being spun, it begins to go much faster. That same premise occurs with our disc golf throw. If you are holding the disc really far out wide from you, you're not going to be able to spin nearly as fast. When you hold the disc closer to you, you can spin much quicker or rather rotate your shoulders and back a lot quicker and therefore generate more force behind the disc. If you guys are enjoying this video and learning a lot, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. I truly appreciate it. All right, let's get back to the video. So how do you generate more force? Keep the disc closer and increase your centripetal force. But wait, I thought this video was about centrifugal force. Why did you say centripetal force? And also we were supposed to be talking about the trail arm and Antonio, you haven't mentioned a single thing about the trail arm yet. Well, hold on just one second. This video is about the trail arm and it is about centripetal force, but also centripetal force. In fact, our trail arm is how we increase centripetal force. 
Centrifugal force happens from our throwing arm and our torso. Centripetal force actually happens with our trail arm. So centripetal force, meaning our trail arm, is actually a pushing motion at the center, at the axis that the centrifugal force rotates around. Think of our solar system. All of the planets are rotating around the sun. That would be the centrifugal force. The sun itself, if you kind of picture it like it's pushing down at the center, or rather the gravity that's pulling everything in, that would be the centripetal force. So we actually can learn a little something from our solar system in regard to disc golf. If our arms are like the planets, we're gonna be focusing on the centrifugal force with our torso and our arm. Our trail arm will actually simulate the sun as the centripetal force in our throw. So these two things have to happen at the same time with the same amount of force. And when they do, chef's kiss, it's the perfect throw. But when the centripetal force and the centrifugal force don't match, it doesn't matter which one is greater than the other, if they don't match, the throw is not chef's kiss. We may not have even noticed it, but when we see all these pros throwing and even people at our local club who have dialed in their form, they are all using their trail arm. None of them are leaving their trail arm hanging. But you don't have to take it from me only. Let's go ahead and let's look at two pros forms that use great centripetal force in their throw. The pros we're looking at today are Drew Gibson and Haley King. I wanna give a quick thank you to both of these players. Thank you guys so much for letting me use your footage. I really appreciate it. If you wanna check out Drew and Haley, check out their Instagram. Drew also has a YouTube channel, so you wanna check that out as well. He's got some great stuff there. But let's go ahead and let's analyze their form. We'll start with Drew Gibson first. Drew is famous for having some of the best distance and cleanest form in the entire game. Um, and there's a reason for that. He's worked on it for years. It's something that he prides himself on. And in these throws, we're seeing some super clean form. But notice his trail arm, because that's what I want to focus on here. His trail arm is not just hanging down by his side. He is using it by, with a pushing motion to generate centripetal force. This pushing motion, coupled with how quickly he rotates his shoulders and arm around his center, is how he can throw a putter 500 feet. So Drew definitely has some great form. Now let's go ahead and let's look at Haley King. Haley King has some great form as well. She definitely has some of the cleanest form in the game, at least in my opinion. Her form is actually very similar to Drew Gibson's. Both of these players bring their trail arms elbow pretty high, almost about shoulder height before pushing it down into their axis. This is super important to note because it's how they can generate so much force. Now with these videos, especially for Haley's, we're looking at drives off the tee. And so when you're driving off the tee, you wanna be able to generate as much power as possible. So getting that elbow nice and high is going to help you increase the centripetal force in your throw. Now don't forget, centripetal force must match the centrifugal force. So just as hard as you're basically pushing on your trail arm, you also need to be rotating hard at the same time. That's where practice is going to come in. These two players have been practicing for years, if not decades at this point. And so they know what it takes for their bodies to throw the disc perfectly. For you and I, it's going to take a little bit of time. We're not going to learn it right away the first time we go out to the field. We're gonna to have to take some time and work on it because we have to figure out how to dial this all in. But don't be discouraged. We can throw super clean discs. And when you couple this type of form with throwing the disc at 10 o'clock, you're going to see some amazing results. If you're not sure what I'm talking about when I say throwing the disc at 10 o'clock, go ahead and check out this video right here when you're done watching this. Personally, one of the struggles that I've had recently with my backhand is that for some reason, I'm feeling really off balance when I throw. My brace leg doesn't really feel right everything just feels a little off kilter but once I started employing more purposeful use with my trail arm I found that I was able to get a lot more balance in my throw and I definitely felt more force behind the disc as it was leaving my hand so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I know there was a lot of technical terminology and I'm sorry if it got a little heavy at times but I hope you learned something. I hope I explained it well. By no means am I a physics major or a physics teacher or a physicist in general, but from my research and my understanding of disc golf, being able to bring these two together, I hope I did a good job explaining this for you. Once again, if you have any questions, check out the links in the description. Well, that's all I have for you today, guys. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. I can't wait to hear about your success stories out at the field and on the course. 
Until next time, guys, have a great round.